So welcome back, and I'm so glad that you decided to join me for this final and fifth module reflection. How fittingly it is that we're going to be wrapping up with this final module. So what better way to start off a reflection model than with a reflection, of course. So if we look back to our module four, which was all about keeping your best possible self, you were introduced to mindful based strategies. And I'm really curious and hopeful that you were able to find one that resonated with you. And did you give it a try? I'm hoping. I also wonder if this mindfulness approach in your opinion, how did it support professional growth and development? Do you think that it's encouraging that growth mindset that we talked about earlier on in this um, preparation? So a couple of reflection questions for you to think about as well. You probably have noticed that all the way through the modules, we have asked some really important questions, right? got you thinking about yourself, what your strengths were, what your core values were, and how your experiences were influencing kind of in the moment, but also your future and maybe even envisioning your future self. So it's important to ask these questions. What did I learn? How does it relate to my now and my future? And you'll see why reflective practice is required now in your studies and education, in your work, and just in life in general. So you've already been engaging in this kind of critical appraisal, this self-reflection all the way through these modules. But if we had to give a little bit of a definition, it's this phase of self-regulated learning as you can see on the slide here, a cyclical process in which individuals monitor and evaluate themselves and their outcomes, right, or your actions in order to help inform your future planning. It's exactly what you've been doing all along. So what are some of the things that we're actually reflecting upon? Jack Mesereau would say in his model of reflective process, that it could be content, the what, process, the how, or premise, the why. And all of these things are really important because their reflection is associated with deeper learning. And it seems to be mutually beneficial, right? So for example, if you're thinking and reflecting upon how you've done something, why did I do that? Or what the outcome was, or what were the barriers? What did I learn, right? You're reflecting on those sorts of things. It leads to deeper learning and deeper learning then enhances our ability to be a reflective practitioner. So they really do go hand in hand. The other thing why it's really important is that the literature supports that this deeper learning is also associated with positive outcomes. The literature consistently show that college students who engage in this self-monitoring and self-reflective practice tend to attain kind of higher grades. They've got better kind of learning outcomes and some regular study habits. So it's really helpful that way. The other thing is that students tend to have a more positive learning disposition as well as look at themselves as lifelong learners. And I would suggest that that is in keeping with the other concept that was introduced, a growth mindset, setting you up for success. So self-reflection has been quite established in education and it's finding itself uh, to be much more commonplace also in medical education. So here we are in gerontology and professional practice, and it is here to stay. Why? Well, with an aging demographic, this changing landscape means that we need to be more responsive to the increasing complexities of our older adults, right? In order for us to meet the needs for these complex needs, we need an interdisciplinary approach. So that means we're relying on partnerships and collaborations to provide best practice care. 
In doing so, we've got to have those 21st century skills like communication and teamwork and critical thinking, because not only are we communicating and dealing with our patients and families, we're now also requiring those skills and those partnerships um, with our team members. Here at Fanshawe, um, we're also showing that these job skills for the future are essential. So the college themselves have identified seven job skills for the future, you can see them here. And each program was actually asked to choose out of these seven, which most kind of resonated with us. And for us in the GIP program, we felt that self-directed learning, social intelligence, and novel and adaptive thinking are kind of the most important new skills that are required of our graduates in the field. And self-reflection certainly is a big part of those job skills for the future in order to be successful. So how do these reflection skills or skills for the future, how does it translate into clinical application? Well, I'd like to share with you a couple of examples in the research. So the first one here, um, these authors actually created a resilience program for undergraduate physiotherapy students. They were hoping to enhance positive coping strategies that the students might face while they were on placement. So not only is transition to post-secondary education stressful, we know that sometimes the experiential learning opportunities might be as well. So they were hoping that with this resilience program that they could help the students become self-aware through reflection and identify the stresses that they were finding themselves facing on field placement and try to utilize strategies like positive self-talk, mindfulness, you'll remember that, um, focusing on the process and, you know, the process rather than just the outcome or the marks. And the students found that they had a lot more confidence and they were positive with their self-perceptions, whether it was going to be the next clinical encounter that they had or even just in their day-to-day -day life when they used this positive coping strategies. But they also identified that they felt that they were in control of their own learning. Similarly, some nursing students, they used reflective journal writing to enhance their self-awareness of kind of their day-to-day -day clinical placements while they were training to be nurses. And again, this particular study found that reflective journal writing was certainly a great tool to be able to demonstrate that self-awareness. So they may be uh, were able to identify their strengths, i.e. some of the nurses, you know, is able to work collaboratively, or they even talked about some challenges that they had from their day to day, just reflecting back, oh goodness, I need to learn a lot more about ventilation machines, for example. And they too, like in this first study, felt accountable for their own learning. And that's really in line with one of those job skills for the future, remember, that we had outlined of self-directed learning. So that's really positive. And this last study was really interesting. The researchers, they took a look at 15 different medical residents. Um, actually, right here in, it was a partnership between the University of Western and St. Michael's in Toronto. And they wanted to see how medical residents dealt with challenging conversations with families in a neonatal critical care unit. Now, the themes that came from this, they did some interviews with these medical residents about their reflection on action, and that's similar to what was happening here, right? When you take a step back and you say, well, how did I do with this particular situation? But what was really interesting that not only did these medical residents reflect back on their actions, but they also took a moment and reflected right at the time during these critical conversations with their families. They, did, they really found themselves slowing down, being mindful, slowing down when you should, 
so that you could engage appropriately with the patient and family. That again is just speaking volumes to our ability to be mindful, to notice, and to be self-reflective in the moment. So how can you engage in self-reflective practice? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can do so. One of them, probably the most popular, is that reflective journal writing. So just like the study that I introduced on that last slide with our nursing students, this also was showing um, some undergraduate students that had a positive experience using reflective journal writing to identify their behavior of procrastination. So what they were able to do is identify what was stopping them from getting their studying done, for example. Um, they then were able to identify and want to change and gave ways that they were going to overcome that procrastination. So let's say they were chatting on the phone or watching TV. They identified that in the moment and it was uh, it got them right on the right track for getting back into their studying habits. And they felt that reflective journal writing was a good tool in order to, um, to make that happen. Another way that reflection can happen is through something called rich pictures. And that is actually what some of the medical students used in that last study that I was referring to on the other slide, those medical students having those crucial conversations with the patients and families. Not only um, did they describe their experiences through interview, but they also used symbols, metaphors, diagrams to really express the emotions and thought processes that um, was happening in those experiences and they found that to be really effective. The last way that I want to share with you and I thought was really neat was some undergraduate pharmacy students who participated in something called the Story Slam. So not only did students but faculty, they participated in this storytelling competition about kind of the most stressful situation that they've had so far as a pharmacy students and they got to vote on, you know, whose was the best and most compelling story. But the 11, 11 of these participants went through some interviews and they really shared that this was a very positive, meaningful um, experience that they went through and that they would continue to endorse using self-reflective practice. They did say that it would be nice if there was specific structured time set aside for that self-reflective practice, but indeed they would continue on with it. And so reflection, as you can see, just leads into this beautifully interconnected cycle. And truthfully, I wasn't quite sure where one started and where one ended. But all I know is that it's this beautifully uh, connected way of learning and being. So with reflection, let's just start here. But I could very much probably start here and come all the way around as well. But if we start with reflection and asking those questions and maybe using some of those strategies that were outlined, the reflective journal writing, maybe it's storytelling, maybe it's um, using pictures or video, videoing yourself or blogging or who knows what, but you're asking those questions. Maybe it's just as simple as sometimes at the end of the day, I'll ask myself, you know, what went well? what maybe didn't go quite as well, and what I might do to make it better for the next time, right? So sometimes it's just checking in with yourself. Um, maybe it's just less formal, just like that. But at any rate, that ability to self-monitor and be critically thinking and being self-aware really opens us up for that growth mindset. Remember being open to kind of change, being able to look at things a little differently, learning from our experiences, and really does position us for continual growth and development. We have seen that that critical, self-directed, uh, critical thinking, communication, all of those things are part and parcel of our skills for the future and how we're going to be able to partner, collaborate with each other um, 
not only for ourselves and our patients, but in and amongst our team members. Um, and this again leads into that lifelong learning, which then is very mutual, you know, beneficial. The lifelong learners are also going to be set up well for skills for the future. And I suppose we could go back around this way. Um, but anyway, it's this beautiful recursive cyclical process and is so essential for our success. So as always, after the introductory video, I hope it inspires you now to go to that take action section. And some of the questions that I'll have you asking for yourself is, you know, how do I keep track of my progress and goals? And what questions am I going to ask myself? Um, hopefully by doing some of these modules, you've got some good questions that you have been repeatedly asking yourself. What I do want you to do for your do section is write or blog or sketch or video some kind of reflection to yourself. I want you to do this reflection and have every intention of putting it away and taking it out at the end of the term and as well at the end of the year and just seeing where you are with that, right? What did you want to accomplish? So write yourself a note. Put it in an envelope or give yourself a video about what you're hoping to accomplish and then when you come back to it at the end of the term and the end of the year reflect on it is it what you thought is did it change what did you learn from that experience or how did you even see yourself right um, my reflection questions is why do you feel like it will be important for you to become a reflective clinician and how might reflection actually translate in your education, your work, and also your life? I'm going to challenge you to also connect with your GIP community. Again, what did you learn from this? Are you ready for our GIP program? What are you excited about? Have you got the right mindset on or really what is your mindset? And I'm also hoping that you've been able to explore or take the chance or the opportunity to explore some of the resources that we have um, in that section as well. So I do have one last to do for you to do as well. And that is at the end of the year, I'm going to have you write a letter to an up and coming GIP student. I want you to think about what advice would you give them? What would you tell them that you learned that you took away from the GIP program? I am sure they will be most grateful for your very valuable thoughts. So this brings our final module on reflection and the GIP program preparation resource to a close. But it really is just the start of your fantastic GIP learning experience. And I'll meet you there.